Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnichi. I'm CCNA and CCNP certified instructor. On this video we are covering CCNA semester 4 connecting networks. This is section 3.4 troubleshooting wide area network connectivity. And here we use show and debug commands to troubleshoot PPP. Troubleshooting PPP serial encapsulation recall that the debug command is used for troubleshooting and is accessed from privilege exec mode of the command line interface. Now you have to remember with the debugs when we run the debugs please do not use it on the production network when it's a busy period because the debug will take the priority on the routers and the, and the switches so it will it can log you off from your device and you won't be able to manage the device. So you should use the debugs with a caution. A debug output displays information about various router operation, related traffic generated or received by the router, and any other error messages. It can consume, uh, is important thing here, it can consume a significant amount of resources, and the router is forced to process switch the packets being debugged. So here's a command debug ppp, and then we can say debug ppp uh, packets displays ppp packets being sent and received this command display low level packeting uh, packet dumps you can say debug ppp negotiation displays the ppp packets transmitted during ppp startup where ppp options are negotiated you can say debug ppp errors which displays the protocol errors and error statistics associated with the ppp connection negotiating and operations we can say a debug ppp authentication which will display the authentication protocol messages including CHAP, packet, exchange and PAP exchanges. You can say debug PPP compression which displays information specific to the exchange of PPP connections using MPPC or we can say debug PPP CBCP display protocol errors and statistics. In addition to the debug PPP command there are other commands that are available for troubleshooting a PPP connections a good command to use when troubleshooting serial interface encapsulation is debug ppp packets command. Debug ppp packets is will uh, explain depicts packet exchange under normal ppp. Here we can see is a normal ppp operation. It's good to f to know how normally normal operation happens. So if when you when you have a problem, you can identify the errors there. PPP authentication, we can say PPP authentication CHAP, which here will enable CHAP on serial interface. Or PPP authentication PAP will enable auth PAP authentication. Uh, we can say PPP authentication CHAP and then PAP. So it will try authentication with CHAP. If that's not available, then it will use PAP. It will not use PAP if CHAP has failed. So only CHAP will use it if, if it's available. You can say PP, uh, debug, uh, sorry, PPP authentication PAP and then CHAP, so it will establish uh, PAP first, try to establish authentication through PAP, and then if that is not available, then it will use CHAP. P uh, PPP authentication if needed, here is optional, with TACX and X TACX, do not perform CHAP or PAP authentication if the user has already provided authentication. This option is available only on asynchronous interfaces. List name optional is used with a AAA or TACX plus. Specify the name of the list of TACX plus method of authentication to use. If not list name is specified, the system uses the default. Lists are created with they are created within the AAA authentication PPP command or with AAA authentication command. Uh, PPP authentication default the optional used with AAA TACX plus create with. Uh, AAA authentication PPP command and call in specify authentication of incoming received callers only. Debug PPP negotiation. When we run this command, we can see a normal uh, connection between the PPPs. It displays the output of the DB debug PPP negotiation command in a normal negotiation where both sides agree on NCP parameters. In this case, protocol types used as IPv4 and IPv6 and proposed and acknowledged. Debug PPP authentication, here is when we have few errors. For example, on the first line, we can see that it's unable to authenticate on the interface serial zero because the peer did not send a name. 
uh, in line 2 for example this is a different error in line 2 we'll say the router was unable to validate the chap response because the username pioneer was not found a third problem could be that says no password was found for pioneer other possible responses for this list might have been no name received to authenticate unknown name no secret for a given name short md5 response received or md5 compare failed in the last line the code 4 means that a failure has occurred other codes value are as follow one is challenge two is response three is success four is for failure id 3 is the id number for lcp packet format length 48 is a packet length without the header Thank you very much for watching. Please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This concludes CCNA semester 4, chapter 3. Thank you very much. Bye bye.